Enlightened self-interest, as a phrase, seems to have first appeared in Edmund Burke's 1790 pamphlet examining the French Revolution, though the concept played a major role in the development of the American Revolution decades earlier. Watching the events in France from across the English Channel quickly turned Mr. Burke, a supporter of the American Revolution, against the French Revolution because it had created, as he put it, a world of monsters. His view, and that of most America's founders, was that the good society is built on individuals working for themselves with an eye to the greater good. The French Revolution viewed the good society as a collective to which each individual was subservient and one's own self-interest was anathema. While I must admit my cultural and biblical prejudice toward individualism and enlightened self-interest in opposition to collectivism in all its forms, I don't provide morning minutes in the Bible on an American missionary to defend or debate political philosophy. Whether promoting individualism or collectivism, the tendency of all humans is to use the state to satiate their own greedy self-interest. Today, as we wrap up our study of the short Old Testament book Jonah, we see the difference between true enlightened self-interest in God and pure selfishness in Jonah. Last time, we noted how Jonah was angry at God for relenting because of Nineveh's repenting, Jonah 4, verses 1 through 4. In his fit of anger, Jonah set up camp outside the city, hoping to see it destroyed. In an effort to get Jonah to see Nineveh through his enlightened self-interest, God caused a plant to grow up over Jonah as additional shade, Jonah 4, verses 5 through 6. Then God caused a worm to kill the plant and remove the shade, which led Jonah to beg God for death to release him from his misery, Jonah 4, verses 7 and 8. In the ensuing discussion, God asked Jonah if he had reason to be angry about the plant and then used Jonah's concern about the plant to illustrate his concern about all the people in Nineveh, Jonah 4, verses 9 through 11. Should I not have compassion on Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know the difference between their right and left hand, as well as many animals? Verse 11. God gets to the heart of the matter, the innocent and defenseless children and animals. God's concern about his own glory demanded he care about them. Jonah's concern for his own comfort and anger excluded any concern about others. When God calls us to obey him, it's for his own glory and ours. When we refuse to obey him, we don't diminish his glory in the least. But we do miss out on being rescued from our misery to share in his glory. If we want to be saved by God, our mere self-interest, must grow into enlightened self-interest that seeks his glory instead of our own. Learn from Jonah. Just don't be like him. Thank you for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClunny hoping you have a great day.